Hi, my name is Gail Tabo Tabo. I'm a second year occupational therapy student in the School of Health Professions. And as proud of how I am to be an occupational therapy student, I could go on and on and on about how amazing OT is. And I would have, you know, like I learned that when we are to come here, we're actually supposed to talk about ourselves. This is super awkward, right? Like who, who's ready to do that? But, but this guy, this guy is. <laughs> Um, well, everybody likes to talk about themselves, or at least should be pretty good about it, because you're the expert on yourself, right? Or you should be. Um, well, it's also important to know that everybody has a story to share, and everybody wants their story to be heard. Like, that's a huge thing, right? You want to be heard. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you guys came here for the free dinner and maybe the free t-shirt as well, but... We're here to connect with each other, find out what kinds of things we have in common, and learn about each other. Um, as you don't really have much of a choice, but you're here to listen to me, and I'm really grateful for that today. <laughs> okay, so some humble bragging type stuff. Um, I've jumped out of a plane. I swam with sharks in Hawaii. Um, rappelled down a waterfall in Mexico a couple years ago, and then have also been hypnotized at one of those <laughs> dinner comedy show things. Yeah, that was, that was a good time. <laughs> but okay, so seriously though, I graduated with my biology degree at University of Texas of Austin, hook em horns. Yes, thank you. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Okay, that's fair. If you did when you were 17 and you picked your majors, good for you, because I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, I actually entered UT Austin with a chemical engineer major did not think like an engineer as much as I tried. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Um, I looked into pre-pharmacy for a little bit. I even got a decent grade on, or a different, decent score on the PCAT. Also not for me. For like a hot second, I looked into PT, but that passed really quickly. Um, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to graduate and get out of there. So I got a degree in biology. Um, the first seven years out, I worked at a pharmaceutical contract research organization. I started out in sample inventory, worked in the lab a little bit, so CLS people, I know, I know what you're about. Um, uh, worked in project management, and then eventually some quality control. While doing that, you know, I got a decent salary. It was cool, I liked my work, but I knew in the back of my mind there was still something more that I wanted to do. I didn't really know what it was yet, though. Um, but my subconscious did. Have you guys ever had recurring dreams? Yes? Okay, what about the one where you're in what position you're in right now, and you realize that your degree is bogus, and you actually have to go take your history final tomorrow? Yeah? Ever, nobody? Okay, well, what about the one where... <laughs> You wake up and you realize the last six weeks, six months of your uh, classes, you actually slept through entirely and you need to take an exam in two hours. Okay, these dreams haunted me for like months, months I had them. So in the back of my mind, I knew I needed to do something more. I knew I wanted to go back to school. I didn't know what for yet. So what I did instead challenged my body instead of my mind. I did my first 5K, and that runner's high, super, super intense, right? Like, it, and, and addicting. So I did my first 5K. Then I decided I was going to sign up for the Dan Skin Women's Triathlon in Austin. I conned a couple of my coworkers to come do it with me. That's a lot of fun, you know, get people, what is it, if you, you struggle together, or I can't remember, I'm really nervous. Um, okay, so. <laughs> So they, did it, so they did it with me, and then that led to my next couple of sprint triathlons. And then I decided I was going to do the MS-150. So I was going to ride my bike from Houston to Austin, and it was going to be a grand old time. And it was. I loved that stuff. I loved getting together with my team and training together and putting together the training schedule and encouraging each other. Do you ever think about what kinds of experiences you've had to bring you to where you are today? Because I did, but I didn't understand the purpose of them until I realized how happy I am to be where I am today in the occupational therapy program here at Utesca. And, and you think about those things and you just have to realize like, 
they brought you to where you are today, and they made you who you are. So everybody has their story that they want to share, right? So we're here today. The, the planning, the competitive nature that I have also got me involved in the Allied Health Games, the School of Health Professions Allied Health Games that we had a couple weeks ago, right? So that was a lot of fun. I'm sure there's at least one person at every table that you could talk to about it and ask them how awesome it was. But I liked being part of the planning committees, volunteering, but I also liked being out on the field. I hope you know right now that you are looking at the two-time spoon egg champion of the Allied Health Games. Really good balance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, my point being, everybody has a story. Everyone at these tables has an incredible background and things to share. So take the time to talk to each other and share those stories and hopefully make some cool connections tonight. Thank you. Well, I for one am so glad Gail went first because she completely took care of the introduction. Um, my name is Ken Kaliza, and uh, I'm absolutely happy to be here. I'm gonna make a, a deal with you guys, okay? I promise I will not be shy if y'all promise y'all will not be shy, okay? So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna ask you to stand up. Please stand up. Wait, 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 wait. You guys are great listeners. No, please stand up if growing up, you've always known what you wanted to be and you're pursuing your career right now, or you're already working in that career. If you've always known, please stand up. All right. That is awesome. Um, since, keep, stay standing, hold on, I'm not done with you. All right, so while you're standing, um, congratulations to you guys. Let's go ahead and raise the roof two times. I'm serious, let's actually do this. Let's raise the roof two times for y'all, all right? Come on, raise the roof, let's go. One, two, perfect, guys, awesome. Go ahead and have a seat. All right, for the rest of y'all, if you've just recently figured out what you've wanted to do, or what you want to do with the, with the rest of your life, please stand up. Within the past couple of years, don't be shy. I'm actually standing up already, so I'm kind of cheating. But don't be shy. All right, so I promise I'm not going to make you guys do anything as old as raise the roof, but we are going to go ahead and hit the dab on three, okay? One, two, three, dab, boom. I'm just glad I wasn't the only one that did that, okay? So, <laughs> a little bit about myself. I'm Ken Kaliza. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm Filipino. Ro <laughs> Woo, yeah! And I uh, grew up in a very conservative family. Uh, my mom was a nurse, yeah, so that stereotype kind of follows through here. Uh, but my family wanted me to become a doctor. They wanted me to work in the medical field. And why is that? It's because of, you know, you have your job security. You're helping people. And um, it's just great. They can brag about having a, a son that's a doctor. That's, that's amazing, right? Well, I didn't want that. That's a whole lot of pressure growing up and having to deal with that, all that pressure. So with that in mind, what did I do? I did the most responsible thing possible. I went and got my bachelor's degree in psychology, <laughs> right? Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense, I know. But hear me out. The reason I did that was because I think I was a little bit emo. I didn't, I didn't go to Hot Topic all the time, I promise I didn't, but, <laughs> but um, I wanted to understand myself as a human being. I wanted to understand the human condition. I wanted to understand why people interact the way they do with each other. So I went ahead and did that. And I could have taken the easy route, and I could have gone on to study more psychology in uh, postgraduate, right? That would have been the easy thing to do, would have been safe. Instead, I decided to pursue a master's in sports medicine. Excuse me. The reason being is I wanted to complement my knowledge of the human mind with the human body. So while I was getting my master's in sports medicine, I learned three things that have stuck with me and kind of influenced my decision to eventually pursue physical therapy. I didn't know it at the time though. Those three things, strength and conditioning, right? Gainesville, yeah. Um, <laughs> muscular imbalances and corrective exercise. These three things right here kind of influenced me. I got my degree and I went ahead and became a personal trainer at 24 Hour Fitness because I wanted to just get, get the ball rolling with my career. I'm coming to you guys because you guys feel you're in the dark. You're in senseless. Okay, so, yeah, I'm coming to you, don't worry. So, while I was a trainer at 24 Hour Fitness, I had a blast. Um, you know, I, I could have, I could have taken, taken that as my career and ran with it. Uh, my boss was one of my clients, so I told him what to do three times a day, three times a week. 
It's pretty awesome. I was also trainer for the vice president of talent acquisitions for the entire company, right? So I could have ran with this, but there were two things missing. One, the, the, the sense of fulfillment, okay? I loved exercise, I loved training. I find it fascinating. The second thing that was missing, health insurance. For whatever reason, 24-hour fitness could not get my health insurance together. So when I was given the opportunity to work as a physical therapy technician by a family friend, I jumped on it. I didn't say it was because of the health insurance, but boy, that's the main reason I did it. <laughs> Working over at the physical therapy clinic, I got to see physical therapists in action. They taught me that you can, you can treat movement dysfunctions with exercise. That is mind-blowing to me, because I already love exercise. That's, that's amazing. I almost cursed, sorry. So, <laughs> so that's amazing to me. I also got to understand why patient-therapist interactions are important and how you develop that with empathy, putting yourself in their shoes, seeing the struggles that they have to go through, and trying to fix that. Finally, I also was able to get some free rehab for the various injuries I sustained in the gym, okay? So... <laughs> Being a genius, I, <laughs> with all this in mind, I thought to myself, I didn't think to myself, wow, this is a career I want to get into. That's not what I thought. I was a genius, so I thought to myself, man, exercise is awesome. That's it. That's all I thought to myself. So one day, my physical therapy friend of mine came up to me and goes, Ken, have you ever thought about a career in physical therapy? I looked at him and I said, no. Why? He said, because you would be great at it. I said, okay, well, I'll look into it. And he said, you should. So I did. And I applied, got into Utesca, loved the family atmosphere over here. Everyone's very welcoming. I jumped on board. But the thing with this, guys, is that there's a, there was a whole lot of self-doubt because I'm thinking back to all the physical therapists that I saw in the clinic. They're all super sharp. They're very good with human interaction and they can think very quickly, and most of them are really, really ridiculously good looking, right? <laughs> so what am I doing? Why would I do this? I took that chance at that opportunity after getting into Utesca, and I have loved every single second I have been here. I love this school, I love the program, my class is my family, and the opportunities to work with patients, mind-blowing. So. I guess what I'd like for y'all to take home with you today from this story is that it's okay to be afraid. It's absolutely okay. But never let your fears and self-doubts prevent you from becoming someone extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you.